MVP Baseball 2005 is not only considered one of the best sports games ever made, but it's also widely considered one of the greatest video games of all time. Even today, almost 20 years after the game was initially released, baseball fans and gamers alike still find themselves flocking to the game for its immersive gameplay, extremely deep game modes, and endless fun. But unlike a lot of EA's other sports franchises, which have been run into the ground over the last decade and a half, MVP Baseball disappeared suddenly and quickly after the 2005 season, never to be seen or heard from ever again. But in order to understand why this happened, we have to go a little bit deeper into the story. Deep into a world of corporate greed, jealousy, and revenge. This is the tragedy of MVP Baseball 2005. This is Sports Oddity. EA Sports, it's in the game. Between 2003 and 2006, EA Sports was pretty much at the peak of its power. It didn't matter if you were talking about football, NASCAR, soccer, or even golf. EA Sports was knocking each of their games out of the park, and was effectively dominating the PS2 and original Xbox era of video games. And baseball was no exception to this rule. In 2003, EA Sports completely revamped their MLB franchise and changed its name from Triple Play Baseball to MVP Baseball. The result was a critical and commercial success that left critics happy and fans wanting more out of the franchise going forward. And just like that, EA Sports had yet another hit on its hands. Building upon the success of the first game in the franchise, MVP Baseball 2004 would raise the stakes even higher the very next season, becoming the very first baseball video game to receive an actual minor league license and feature actual AAA and AA teams in its game. If the 2003 version firmly reasserted EA Sports' place in the baseball game marketplace, 2004's version made the franchise the game to beat in that market. But almost nobody, not even EA, could have predicted the sheer impact that the 2005 version of the game would have on the sports video game industry. Released as part of what is arguably EA Sports' greatest year of releases ever, MVP Baseball 2005 hit shelves in March of 2005 and became an instant hit among critics and fans alike. Initially viewed as being simply a tune-up from last year's version of the game, MVP Baseball 2005 actually brought a lot to the table for all kinds of baseball fans and outsiders alike to enjoy. For the franchise mode fanatics, MVP Baseball introduced the first owner mode to MLB baseball games, including the first of its kind build a stadium feature. For all of the completionists out there, there were a ton of collectibles to unlock throughout the game including 15 classic stadiums, 5 fantasy parks, more than 100 retro uniforms, as well as 2 Legends teams made up of 63 former Legends of the game. And for all of the casual fans out there, MVP Baseball 2005 featured two of the most iconic mini-games in sports video game history. Add to that one of the deepest franchise modes in a sports video game, gameplay improvements like the Batter's Eye, and an iconic soundtrack, and you have a recipe for one of the greatest sports video games of all time. But unfortunately for the fans who were excited to see where the franchise was heading next, MVP Baseball was suddenly shut down later that year, never to be heard from again. To understand why this happened, however, we have to talk not about baseball, but about football. In August of 2004, just a few months prior to the release of MVP Baseball, EA Sports released Madden NFL 2005. 
Like a lot of EA's releases at that time, that year's version of Madden was among the best that they had ever produced, with huge gameplay upgrades on defense and the addition of Xbox Live online play for players. In any other year, they could have just chalked this up as an easy W and called it a day. But unfortunately for them, for the first time in years, they were facing a serious threat to their stranglehold on the football marketplace, this time in the form of visual concepts. Just one month prior to the release of Madden, Sega, Visual Concepts, and 2K Sports came together to release ESPN NFL 2K5 a game that would become a major thorn in Madden's side for many reasons. First and foremost, the game was widely considered to be a better video game than Madden, with much more innovative gameplay and much better presentation visually. It also helped that they had the institutional backing of ESPN, a move that gave them serious clout among sports fans. But where they hit EA the most was where it hurt them the most that being their wallet. Prior to the release of NFL 2K5, Madden was supposed to go on the market for $49.99 that year. However, 2K decided to do something extremely bold, and they sold their game for $20, undercutting EA by more than half their price. So not only did 2K have a much better product at a much, much lower price point, they also had a month-long head start on the Madden team. And as expected, Madden not only lost a ton of market share that year, but they also had to cut the price of their game by $10 right off the bat. Naturally, EA wanted to make sure that nothing like this ever happened again. But instead of facing their market competition head-on, EA took the actual capitalist way out and monopolized the entire market through brute force. By January of 2005, EA announced an exclusive rights agreement with the NFL that gave them the sole content rights to a simulation football title, effectively taking visual concepts in 2K Sports out of the market completely. As you might expect, 2K's developers were none too happy about this new development and they looked for any way possible to get back at EA Sports for this slight. And for them, it looked like the best way forward was going to be EA's fledgling baseball title, which was another direct competitor to one of 2K's products. So, just a couple of weeks after the announcement of the NFL deal, and just a few weeks prior to the release of MVP Baseball 2005, 2K Sports announced its own exclusive rights agreement, this time with MLB, one that would give them exclusive rights to MLB video games in the future. In other words, in retaliation for getting kicked out of the football game industry, 2K Sports completely took out the MVP Baseball franchise just a few short weeks before their most recent version of the game was supposed to be released. A brutal end for a promising franchise. However, this move would ultimately come back to kick 2K Sports in the butt. As with EA and their franchises, 2K inevitably ran their MLB franchise into the ground. But unlike EA, 2K left a little bit of wiggle room in their exclusive rights agreement. Just enough room for Sony to make their own competitor to 2K Sports' MLB games and ultimately overtake their inferior product. And 2K's MLB division would end up shutting down in 2014. But unfortunately for us, Due to this game of corporate sabotage, we were never able to see what would have become of the MVP Baseball franchise in the future. However, even though we didn't get to see what future iterations of the game would have looked like, MVP Baseball 2005 is still alive and well. Even today, you can still download roster updates to keep the game relevant with the times and a lot of the lore surrounding the game, specifically things like John Dowd, the cheat codes built into the game, and of course that addictive minigame, are still just as relevant today than ever. The truth is, even 15 plus years after its release, MVP Baseball 2005 is still the standard to which we've held every single MLB title that has come out since. And for good reason. 
It has built up a reputation as one of the best baseball video games of all time, and one of the best video games period, because it is simply one of the best video games that has ever been developed. And while it may be easy to sit here and mock what EA has become, and frankly, they deserve it, I think we do need to step back and appreciate the things that they've done right. Because games like MVP Baseball don't come around very often, and frankly, I don't think we're ever going to see a game quite like MVP Baseball 2005 ever again. So with that in mind, thank you MVP Baseball for all the memories you've created and for all the memories that are still yet to come. How's it going everyone? Connor here with The Diamond and thank you so much for watching this episode of Sports Oddity. If you liked what you saw, you can check out more of our content by clicking the link right next to me. Or if you're in the mood for more baseball content, we've curated some of our favorite baseball videos into a playlist that you can check out down below. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on social media at The Diamond US on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.